So thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. And first, for those who didn't attend the interesting session today, please, can you introduce yourselves and the, the field of experience that you have? Okay, so my name is Patricia Sutherland. I'm the library manager at the College of the North Atlantic. Okay. Um, I'm Brett Williams. I'm the systems librarian at the College of the North Atlantic. So first, we'd like, of course, we thank you so much for attending the ICT and Education Conference. And your, your session was about 23 things that teachers can integrate in their education. So you also labeled it as learning 2.0. So what is your definition of the term and how is it different from the conventional learning that we know? Well, Learning 2.0 is, is, an, is another name for the, for the program. And basically what it means is learning about Web 2.0. They call Web 2.0 the social web. Mm -hmm. it, 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 um, it involves learning about the tools that involve interaction on the website, collaboration, mm -hmm. creating content. It's a very different environment than when the internet first started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Web, Web 2.0 is about collaboration. It's about working, group work. Um, there's a lot of technologies that enhance that, like blogs where someone posts, mm -hmm. and then there are comments afterwards, or wikis where multiple people can come together and create something that's greater than any of them could have created by themselves. Mm -hmm. And what's great about this program is that you need to use Web 2.0 tools mm -hmm. to complete the program, mm -hmm. to learn about Web 2.0. So as a teacher, why should I use Web 2.0? What benefits will I get or will I give to my students? Well, really, there's, your students are using them anyway. Your mm -hmm. students are on the internet and they're using them and they may not be using them in a way that is helpful to their education or that <clears throat> lets them learn what they should about understanding how people put Web 2.0 um, <clears throat> websites together, how people use them. Mm -hmm. and for instance, Wikipedia, if mm -hmm. someone just accepts what someone wrote without understanding that many people have come together to create that, mm -hmm then they don't really understand how how the process works. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, the children of today have grown up from birth, many of them, with technology. Mm -hmm. They expect it, they learn it, they're different. I think as teachers, it's, it's imperative that you keep the students engaged. Mm -hmm. And you also prepare them for a knowledge economy, a knowledge society. Mm -hmm. And that knowledge economy, knowledge society, involves using these tools because they will be using them as they get older mm -hmm. in further education and in the workplace as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a debate whether Facebook and social media are beneficial tools of education in schools. So are you with or against using them as educational tools? Well, you know, Facebook, everyone laughs and says it's the pictures of the kids and they're, they're with their friends. Mm -hmm. But many of the really um, progressive schools libraries and, and other institutions that, that are concerned with education of children mm -hmm. are going to where the children are and the kids are befriending them. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice way then to precisely be able to add a little more control into the children's experience with Web 2.0. Mm -hmm. Really, when you ban Facebook, that doesn't take away the fact that it exists and that the students are using it in mm -hmm. general. So being there, um, having, if the students know that the teacher is there or that their parents are online mm -hmm. and are watching what they do on Facebook, mm -hmm. then they are going to perhaps be a little bit more careful or the teacher or the parent may be able to spot something that the student is doing and correct it before it becomes a bigger issue. Mm -hmm. And you know, on top of it too, the, the students, they're used to interacting mm -hmm. like Facebook. Mm -hmm. Short text, easy, throw up a picture, short. This is how they're used to interacting. And I think as educators, you can use that form, mm -hmm. that form of communication, mm -hmm. um, like Facebook, mm -hmm. and make a presence, and, and, uh, and the students and the kids will respond. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned there are more than 3 million Wikipedia pages in English being currently available. So with Wikipedia being currently so heavily used, do you think that can be a credible source of uh, educational information or it rests only as an opinion and not something we can rely on? 
Well, we're librarians, and, and, and really, we, we spend a lot of time teaching mm -hmm. um, authority and evaluating information on the internet. And Wikipedia is a fabulous place to start. We always tell students, before you do the project, get a sense of your subject. Mm. And Wikipedia is a great place to start. Read it. But mm -hmm. no, don't, don't put it in your bibliography or, mm -hmm. or in your reference list or, or the quote from it, because it is not, it's an opinion piece as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. It's not an authoritative source. Mm. Again, yeah, Wikipedia is a beginning. It's, it's a place to start. And what it does is it gives you a quick overview, just like looking at the Encyclopedia Britannica or the World Book Encyclopedia gives you a quick overview, but no one, no one, even uh, <clears throat> when I used a paper encyclopedia, you don't write your paper based on a paper encyclopedia. Mm. You use it to start and then you move on from there. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, regarding this topic, you mentioned there is a comparison that has been taking place recently between Encyclopedia Britannica and Wikipedia. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, it was, um, it was uh, written about, written up about in, in the magazine called Nature. Okay. And what they did is they looked at error rates in the Encyclopedia Britannica mm -hmm. and Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and they found there was no substantial difference, mm. um, which is really quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that, um, I'm, re I'm reading a book recently, uh, right now actually, it's called Drive, and it's by this, this man, Daniel Pink, who also wrote about how right-brainers mm -hmm. the world. He's very much involved in that whole Thomas Friedman flat, the okay. world is flat idea. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's interesting because Wikipedia is probably the worst business model and if anyone had ever, you know, put money or whatever on it when it first started, they would have said there's no way that this will succeed. Yeah. It's run by volunteers, mm. everything else, and it has outshone, um, well its rival at that time was Encarta by, by Microsoft that had all the money against it. Mm. You know, it's, it's amazing. Um, what Wikipedia is, and there are a lot of very, very smart people out there, mm -hmm. and they do it for free, and they do it for fun. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing about Wikipedia is it doesn't have a page limit, um, and which means you get some really funny things, like mm. page after page after page of <clears throat> articles about episodes of TV series. But Wikipedia also has a history of all the different edits that have been mm -hmm. done. So if you look at, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. if you look at a Wikipedia page about a political figure, you can see as people make edits over the course of that political figure's career, how things have changed and how people, how people view the person. And there's, since there's no page limit, you don't have to cut all of that out with the Encyclopedia Britannica. That's mm -hmm. invisible. That's mm -hmm. in experts' heads in experts' papers. With Wikipedia, all that history is right there in front Actually, of you. Actually, do you know, that's fast fascinating because that could be a new form of social uh, sciences. It's social looking at uh, social analysis. Of, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's fascinating. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the advantage of a wiki. <laughs> okay. So, mentioning wikis, is it any different from blogging or are they just two representations of the same idea? Well, really, when you get back to the very basics of the web, the web is designed to be interconnected. Mm -hmm. And um, really, the collaboration that you do on a wiki and the collaboration you do on a blog, uh, a lot of it is the same. Some of them run on the same technologies on, mm -hmm. the, back, on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> a wiki is really, it, the way that it looks at the beginning is that there is no author. Mm -hmm. that there is a collaborative, it's a group effort. Mm -hmm. A blog is very clearly as one author mm -hmm. or a group of authors that write an article and then there are comments about it below. A wiki may be the product of hundreds of people mm -hmm. who have edited and added links and changed things around, but a blog really contains standalone articles. A blog is more like a journal, mm -hmm. a wiki is more like an encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, some people say that Web 2.0 may kind of overtake or eliminate the role of teachers and that students won't need any teachers in the future since they have all what they need 
in Web 2.0. So what do you think of this idea? You know, they say it's the same about libraries, that with the internet there would be no more books in libraries. Yeah. And if anything, I think there's, we see now that there's probably increase in book buying mm -hmm. and interest in books, mm. as there is in the internet, the whole thing's going up. Actually, I, I think the role of teachers now is more crucial than ever, mm. because you need individuals who understand information. There's, there's a plethora of information out there now. Mm. You need individuals who can understand it, sift through it, present mm. the best, help the students sift through it, mm -hmm. and then also have that sound sort of pedagogical learning to design a curriculum that can enhance the learning process mm -hmm. by both in the classroom and using the tools. Mm. So I think just, you know, the sky is not falling for educators. I think they're probably going to be needed more than ever. But the skills that they have mm. will also have to change. Mm -hmm. yeah, skills, skills have changed. There are things you need to know. There are things that you need to change in, in the way the curriculum is developed. But the basics, things like, is this a reliable source or not? Mm. It's the same as whether you're looking at a book in front of you or looking at a website. What do you look at? You look at who the author is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does had, <clears throat> Has she um, been a member of any associations? Does she publish a lot on this? Do um, I know any of the work of the authors she cited? Mm -hmm. And if you look um, at that on a, <clears throat> on a book, you're going to do the same thing on a web page. Do I know the man who wrote this article? Does he participate any in, in any associations? Um, it's the same. It's the same process in determining what's reliable information and what's not. It's just in a little bit of a different form. Mm -hmm. And actually, they find now with the explosion of information on the in internet and this this fabulous idea now that anyone can post and create content. Mm -hmm. If anything, that role of filtering and teaching how to filter is more important mm -hmm. than ever. And again, I'm going to go back to Thomas Friedman, and, and primarily because he was here, and it was a fascinating okay. lecture. I mean, I, I just loved it. You know, and he said he said that that you know the internet does not come with a already being pre-approved sign on it. Mm. It's just out there, yeah. out there, mm -hmm. and it's up to us now to develop those skills, to develop them in the children mm. on how to responsibly, ethically, and with um, critical thinking, mm. take that information and what's there and then mm. be able to apply it. The, uh, the term that gets thrown around sometimes is curated content, yes. which is okay. it's a hot new thing which people who are experts gather together lists of things mm -hmm. that they know about that are reliable sources, which librarians have been doing since the Great Library, Library of Alexandria. Of Alexandria. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a new term for a very, very old thing. <laughs> there it was papyrus. Now it's, you know, bits and bites, right? So. Yeah. It's totally different. So I'm sure many of the teachers that attended the session wanted to know how can they get their, their schools on board. Now they're really interested in Web 2.0, but what can they do to ensure their schools join the wave? Again, it's just, it's that being able to generate the enthusiasm, um, make it non-threatening. Mm. Because I think that, you know, originally you go, I can't develop a wiki. And then you think, I can type. Mm -hmm. I, I use words, so I know what all those icons that there mean. I know bold, I know this, I know that. Mm -hmm. It's not so hard. Mm. And this whole idea, and I think that, Brett, you really, <laughs> you know, it was great to say, if you make a mistake, mm -hmm. You can go back and you can undo. If you if it just looks terrible, you start again. There, there's no cost to you in doing it other than your time. Mm. Um, you know, it's just so it's getting away from making it threatening. It's also taking you know committing to to spending your time learning this. Mm. So I think that teachers have to understand, or or have to come to, you know, to hopefully they will come to realize that the students are soon going to overtake mm. take us with education mm -hmm. until we get on board. And then they have to embrace this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a lot of it is not being afraid to make a mistake. Mm. Um, and that's where the 23 Things program is, is useful because 
it's low pressure. It's not during. It's not a pedagogical activity. It's not. You're not involved in teaching. You're not involved with students. This is you figuring it out with other teachers. Mm. So you've got your peers with you. And if you make a mistake, if you don't understand it, if you don't like it, mm. it's not that big a deal. Mm. Um, for instance, I don't use YouTube very much, but. I use RSS. I read 600 blogs on my RSS reader. Mm -hmm. um, so you pick and choose what you like, and that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that if I'm a teacher, I wanted to encourage my fellow uh, colleagues to also embrace Web 2.0. You mentioned about the incentivization or the rewards. So can you highlight yeah. on this part? Well, they just found that re rewarding for success was was um, a good, it, when they implemented this program, that mm -hmm. it really it really seemed to motivate mm. individuals. Now, the rewards don't have to be big. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're all adults, which also means that we're all pretty quite competitive, usually. <laughs> so, sometimes that, that yeah. type of uh, motivation is, is good enough. But, um, but it's the whole idea, too, of acknowledging success. Mm. And that's important. Now, the rewards are fun if that, if that works. For you, you know, like the first person to, to complete three modules gets um, a book, gets a journal, or gets a pizza. Their mm -hmm. class get a pizza. Like, you know, you can even get your students involved in this as well, right? Mm -hmm. I know that certainly that happens in schools all over, mm -hmm. that the school who, who cleans up the most garbage, you know, mm -hmm. They, that class gets a pizza, right? Well, maybe mm -hmm. they can push their student, their teacher on and say, you got to get there, miss. you got to get there, miss. We want the pizza. Yeah. So it's... <laughs> it's a good way of You know, there's it. many ways that you could look at the idea of yeah. rewards. But when they originally put this, they found that rewards were important. Mm -hmm. How you define rewards, I think, would be suitable for what is suitable for your institution. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember correctly, the Charlotte and Me Mecklenburg counties, they gave out uh, an MP3 player to everyone who completed the, the <clears throat> 23 Things program. But they also, there was another, um, there was another college that used USB keys with the, with pre-printed with the name of the program on it so mm -hmm. that people would remember, so that people had a resource to go back to. I mean, they just look at their USB key, they've got the, the mm -hmm. URL to the website right there. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, that's, that's one way that you can do it. But the reward shouldn't be what motivates the individual right. to complete the program, because mm. that doesn't work. Mm. Um, and that is that would be my only caveat in there. Like, rewards are important, mm. but that's, if, if that's the only motivator, then the learning won't take place. Mm. Okay. So you mentioned really interesting things about the child versions of popular uh, social networking sites like Facebook. So can you mention some of these sites because they, they were really interesting? Well, Moshi Monsters, Club Penguin, all of those, if you think about it, your child develops or creates, even like the fairyland world, you know, or, or something, your child creates a character and then they go and they operate in a little um, town, a village, you know, a little microcosm world mm -hmm. as this character. And they're meeting up with other characters that could be operated by children from all around the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And they're doing things together. Mm -hmm. And they're becoming friends. They're, they're you know, like, they yeah. can be my friend, right? Yeah. They're friends on Moshi Monsters. These yeah. little monsters are friends, right? So it's, it's <laughs> like, this is the mini version of, yeah. of social networking and Facebook. And, and it just has become the norm mm. now. You know, we don't even think of these games as social networking. But this is what they're doing, because mm. they can send mail to each other. Mm. You know, they communicate. It's just the baby version. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you want to weigh in on that. You might have. A <laughs> uh, I, I don't know much. My, my little ones are uh, three and six months yeah. now, so I don't really know too much about the, yeah. the, little, the little kid version <laughs> of it. <laughs> well, yeah, my daughter is uh, going to be nine, and certainly okay. we've been through all of that. <laughs> and, and they just keep, you know, I mean, I don't know how many times I've had to sign her up, star dolls, this, 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 you know, and, okay. and it's. And it's the latest thing, and she'll come home from school, and she'll say, everyone's on this, I have to, you know, <laughs> everyone's on this. And then she goes and she meets all of her friends and uh -huh. meets all these other people. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's natural for them. Yeah. Not natural for me, because I didn't grow up that way. Natural mm -hmm. for them. 
Mm -hmm. So children's way of thinking has has yes, changed. Absolutely. And the way children read, mm -hmm. you know, the reading, there's difference information knowledge, the way that each is gathered in. Mm -hmm. I think skimming is really big. Look at SMSing and texting and all the short forms that are used. Mm -hmm. um, not that kids don't, don't write properly, mm -hmm. but there is, you know, they understand too when is it short form. Facebook, they can use other short forms. When do they need to write properly, mm -hmm. grammatically correct? When can they skim, read entire texts? It's, it's very different. These, these children are very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. A lot of studies have shown, actually, when they look at online gaming and things like this, yeah. the skills that kids are using, and they're, they're looking at them, they're called the millenniums, the skills that are needed at the university level. Mm -hmm. Teamwork, strategy, you know, um, collaboration, all of these used to be taught a traditional way, and now the kids are coming to school with these skills already. Mm. They've learned it through online gaming and through social. Mm -hmm. Well, well, just just think about it. Um, before the internet, you're sitting there and you're thinking, who is who is the king of England mm -hmm. in at the turn of the century? And you sit in your house and you think, and you have no way to figure that out unless you get up and you go if you have an encyclopedia in your house, yeah. or you have to go to the library. Mm -hmm. But now, I pull out my phone, I type in, who's the king of England? Mm -hmm. I get the answer immediately. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a utter, it's a total change in how fast we can get information, mm -hmm. almost at the speed of thought. Mm -hmm. It's just immediately available 24-7. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that Web 3.0 may be coming. So what's your take on, on this term, and how would it look like? Well, Web 3.0 is, uh, it's, it's not a very well accepted term. A lot of people are mm -hmm. calling the semantic web, mm. Web 3.0. Um, the semantic web is tagging items on the web, so videos, audio files, <coughs> PDFs, mm -hmm. all of this with descriptive terms, mm -hmm. um, and with data about what this is. So, say I have a video on the, on the web. Mm -hmm. What's it about? It's about the ICT Cotter conference. Its, <coughs> its resolution is this. Its topics are this. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, excuse me, it has, it is this long. All of that is encoded inside the file itself. Okay. And then using that information, computer systems can recommend <coughs> to someone else. So I'm involved in ICT in Australia mm -hmm. and I <coughs> go into a website that has the semantic web enabled and what it does, I type in a query for uh, 23 things and it pulls in all the information <coughs> into one place. Say I'm doing the query on my mobile phone it recognizes that this piece of the internet isn't going to, this PDF file okay. won't appear on my phone, but mm. the video will. Mm. So it recognizes, pulls the video, and you can see the video immediately. Mm -hmm. That's the idea of the semantic web. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any? No, I have nothing. <laughs> Brad, Brad is, when it comes to the, tech, you know, the technology part, I yeah. really do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for this exciting and lovely interview and thank you so much again for joining us in ICT Education Conference. Thank you very much.